dates. 1846, 1854, 1850. Come on with me. 1917, 1877. These are people of color who lived on these blocks lived within these homes, generations of them, and notice the color line stops at Washington Street. It's all white, all black. My grandmother had a house on Jefferson Street. My aunt had a house on Corby Street. I grew up on Broad Street. I live on Jackson Street right now. Black Cape Men. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This painting was painted by Miss Lois Smith here, who's 93, and she thinks she's 92, don't tell her. <laughs> she painted that painting and donated it to the church next door. She's a member. The church donated the painting to the museum because of, excuse me, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke here and came in 1958 at the Quaker Convention. Oh. So to commemorate him, she gave this painting to the church. I'm a jazz musician and proud of it. Although it ruined several marriages for me. <laughs> Up and downside to everything. This is Tommy Powder. He's an upright jazz musician, bassist. He's an inspiration to me. He helped invent bebop jazz with Miles Dewey Davis and Charlie Bird Parker. He also played with Dizzy Gillespie. Incredible human being. I knew his entire family. This is Mr. Louis Purnell. He became, these people are from Cape May, by the way, born in Cape. This is Mr. Louis Purnell. He became the Smithsonian Institute's first African-American curator. He also oh. flew 88 missions over, Nazi, over uh, Europe to defeat Nazi tyranny. This is Mr. Ellie May, who became the first African-American policeman in Cape May. This is the Cape May Giants, African-American uh, baseball team. This is a very important wall. And, I, and some, some of these people, who on this wall did I know? Mr. Potter. And that's all I knew on this wall, because this goes from 1820 to the 50s. But now let's go over here. These are my people right here. My Aunt Becky was the first African-American valedictorian of my alma mater, Lord Cape May Regional High School. Mr. Doc Clifton Anderson helped integrate the National Football League. I know his entire family. One of his daughters is my fellow tour guide here at the Harry Tubman Museum, Linda Anderson Towns. This is Miss Amelia Smith, Amelia Hampton, excuse me for that. Miss Amelia Hampton helped save the Smith house. She sent a telegram to Abraham, uh, come on, to Linda B. Johnson to have it intervene to not have that house go into the wrecking ball. The Stephen Smith house, circa 1847, he purchased his own freedom from his master, he was a conductor on the Underground Railroad. He was the wealthiest African American in the country at the time, and there's his summer home right there, 1847. This is Mr. Jack Fasser. He was a mayor of West Cape May for 26 years, the first African American mayor of West Cape May. Uh, this is Mr. William J. Moore. He became tennis, uh, a tennis pro at Cape May Tennis Club. He was one of the first African American tennis pros in the country from right here in Cape May. I'm sorry. That's why I like that. <laughs> he knew. He knew. Folks, this is the first thing that I said that's true all day. Your tour is over. <laughs> You've been incredible. Thank you. You know what I found out? I found this out. When I'm in the service of other people is when I find my best self. Thank you for bringing that out of me. You've been an incredible audience. This has been a joy to give you this information about the incredible Harriet Tubman. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The restaurant's over there. Got it. Yes. Can you do a shout out to my student, Jaden? Jaden? From Dominguez Elementary. Jaden from Dominguez Elementary. I just gave an incredible tour here at the Harry Tubman Museum of Cape May. Sorry you couldn't make it, but for future references, please come and visit the Harry Tubman Museum of Cape May. You will be richly rewarded with information, heritage, and history. Have a great day. Thank you.